Perfect. All right, guys, how you doing tonight? And everybody's on mute, so you really can't say anything back. Ha ha ha. <laughs> but you can wave, you can smile. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> All right, awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I know I'm a minute early, but I'm gonna give you guys some really quick tips. Make sure you go to wethrivevault.com. All right, and on there, that's where you wanna go down to personal development, click on it and find the Miracle Morning Sheet that we put up there on Lisa's page. I just realized, so mine actually that I made a couple years ago has my name on it. And so Lisa's team recreated it and I just realized they forgot the last um, part of it. So it, going across, it should say the date, but it should say silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing. So it's missing the last one, scribing slash journaling. So if you um, are going to print this out, just remember to add that last little part in at the end because that's equally important. So I'm sharing this tonight about the morning routine because for me, this has been huge. And actually, really quick, I'm going to unmute you, Kelly. Kelly, did you start this pretty quickly in the beginning of your business? Yes. Um, you hear me? Uh, yeah, you're kind of quiet. I'm going to turn my volume. It's probably mine. Um, yeah, yeah, you you actually did um, a miracle morning sort of session, and then you did a calendar blocking session when I first began, and it completely changed. And I was already pretty organized, but it completely changed everything. And if you stick to what Blair is going to teach you, I promise you guys, you will become so incredibly efficient. Love it. Yeah, we'll do the calendar blocking one probably in like. I don't know. Maybe I'll get it done next week before I go to Cabo. That's probably a better idea than trying to do when I get back from Cabo. So yeah, so plan on that, guys. Um, I'll let you know when and exactly it is. Hopefully we can do this exact same time next week. But here's what I learned. When I was first introduced to direct sales, as a lot of you guys may know, I started with a jewelry business. And I hadn't had a lot of personal development at that point, but I had some. And anything that I was struggling with in that business, I figured out a way to learn more about it by going to YouTube, by finding books that would help me. I'd never done sales a day in my life. And um, one of the best books that I read during that, that four and a half years that I was with that company was the Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, and so those are all really great things. But what I wasn't doing was being really great at my scheduling time. And I kept hitting some roadblocks in that business and not getting to where I wanted to be. And yes, some of that was because of the company that I was with, but some of it was my own fault. And so when I started with Lavelle, one of the things that kind of happened to me was my husband was starting his real estate company at the exact same time. And somebody had told him about Miracle Morning for Network for real estate agents. So he started listening to it and reading it and had me do the exact same. So we started our morning routine together at the very beginning of my Lavelle business, which I swear is such a God thing and so amazing because it completely transformed how I go through my day, my actions, my thoughts. But more importantly, I truly believe it's a reason that I hit four, that I hit 200K in four months because I became the master of my calendar, which I'll teach more on next week, but I couldn't have become a master of my calendar if I hadn't mastered my day. If I didn't know the things that I needed to focus and put my mind on, it was almost like my brain needed a retune, a tune up to truly understand the things that I needed to do to be successful. You know, it's only a very small percentage, right? 1% that are the multimillionaires and same thing in these businesses. It's always the 1% that seem to make and be the greatest. So what is it that they all have? They all have a vision for what they want. They are affirming it every single day. They are visualizing it. They're believing that it's already happening. I literally was just watching um, last night when I was having my own little self-care time in the bathtub. I was watching Think and Grow Rich. I don't know if you guys have seen it. They have a movie out now. And in the beginning of it, Barbara Co Cochran or Corcoran, I'm not sure how you say her name. The one who's like a real estate mogul. She's on Shark Tank, right? She's got the really short blonde hair. She was saying, before I even got to each stage that I was at, which by the way, she started as a waitress in New York City, okay? And built up all of this by learning from other people about real estate and then taking on each action, right? And so by doing that, what she did was she made sure that at each stage, she said she thought of you know, what do I want to be? I'm going to, I'm going to already think now that I'm at the next stage. Okay. And so 
by doing that, she was preparing her mind to already believe that she was doing it. So it's a lot of what we're talking about too with the Miracle Morning. But I want to read you guys a quote really quick. If you guys have never done the Miracle Morning, I do suggest the book. I think it's an amazing book. I personally prefer the Miracle Morning for Network Marketers because at the end of each chapter, they have somebody who's making six to seven figures a year share, and they're in all different uh, all different businesses, all different network marketing businesses. So it's all different kinds of people. And you will see how they make it work for them. Not everybody does it first thing in the morning. I do it first thing in the morning because it's how I set my day. Still believe it should be first thing in the morning. Oh, thanks, Kelly. Yep. Awesome. And I still believe it should be first thing in the morning. But what you'll hear some of them say is, they don't wake up till 10 o'clock in the morning because that's how they live their life now that they have time freedom with the life that they've chosen. So however you want to do it is fine, but I do really suggest the book if you've never read it before, but I want to read you guys this really quick. It says, notice I'm not starting with what you want. Everyone wants things, but we don't get what we want. We get what we're committed to. You want to be a millionaire? Who cares? Join the non-exclusive club. Oh wait, you're 100% committed to becoming a millionaire by clarifying and executing the necessary actions until the results are achieved. Okay, now we're talking. And that's what this is all about. It's taking the steps that you need to take in order to achieve it. Not just saying it, but going for it. So let's break down what the miracle morning is. And for each one, I'm gonna really dissect them um, into smaller pieces, but remember this, it's savers. S-A-V-E-R-S, -E okay? The first S stands for silence. But before I even get into that, let me teach you guys a couple little tricks. You're gonna have to start by getting up before anybody else, okay? If you have children in your home or you have a spouse in your home, you're gonna have to get up before them. And I know that's a commitment. I love my sleep. Any of you guys who've ever gone on a trip with me know I love my sleep. I love to go to bed early and I love to know exactly what time I'm gonna have to wake up in the morning so I know exactly what time I need to go to bed so I get my eight hours of sleep. It's the kind of person I've always been. So knowing that when I first started, I started with 10 minutes earlier that I would wake up. And then after that, the next week I went to 20 minutes earlier and then 30 minutes earlier. And you guys, I had to do this same routine this fall because in the summer we sleep in. I wake up whenever I want because my kids sleep in later than me and I can start my miracle morning without having anybody interrupt me. So when school started again, I had to practice getting up 10 minutes earlier than 20, then 30, then 40 for however long you need for your miracle morning. Okay. So another trick is I put my alarm clock across the room not beside my bed, across my room, but my Thrive capsules, right? My women's capsules are right beside my bed. So as soon as my alarm clock goes off in the morning, I have to go across the room, turn it off, get my capsules, pop them in my mouth, drink my water, go straight to the bathroom, brush your teeth, wash your face, it will wake you up, and then head straight into wherever you are going to do your miracle morning. You have to find a space for this, guys. So wherever it is, for some of you, you are already enjoying beautiful weather in North Carolina or up north or out west. So go outside if you can, because it is a great way to clear your mind and clear your thoughts. But if you're like me in Florida or like Kelly in Florida, it is still at a heat index of 103. We are not going outside in the morning <laughs> and there's a lot of mosquitoes. So we are doing it and wherever we can find a quiet place. So for me, it's this office in the morning. I shut the door, I light a candle and I get started. So the very first S stands for silence. And I'm sure you guys know this is the one I fight with the most, right? So hard to silence your brain, but it is so vitally important. So in the very beginning, start with putting a two minute timer on your phone. And when thoughts creep into your mind, just kind of listen to them and then try to clear your mind again. It's not, you know, one of the biggest things that you can do for yourself is not to judge the thoughts that come into your head, right? But also it's not a time to make a to-do list. So like for me, when I first started, I wanted to write down my to-do list of everything that was coming into my head. That's not what this is for, okay? This is for a time to completely clear your mind. So as those things come into your head, just try to clear your mind again. Okay, don't beat yourself up. Don't judge the thoughts that come through your head. It's literally just a time to quiet your mind. Some of you will still be half asleep until your Thrive capsules pop you back into being awake, so it'll be easy for you. For some of you, it'll be harder for like me. And start with two minutes, then go to four minutes. I still can only master five minutes. I think that's the longest I've ever gone. But generally, I do three minutes because I'm like so excited to get to the next step because I actually like the next steps. So I do three minutes of silence, but I've also learned how important that silence is. And so some of these things that you're going to be learning about with Miracle Morning of these savers tips, 
you are going to want to implement it other parts of your day. So for example, before my kids come home from school every day, I take another two, two or three minutes for complete silence, right? I just completely silence my mind. I completely calm my, my thoughts, try to let go of anything and try not to judge the thoughts that come through my head, right? So you're going to find that some of these tools that you're learning, yes, you need to apply them first thing in the morning, but you might also find that they're helpful in other places in your life throughout the day. So S in the very beginning is silence. A stands for affirmations. So I'm curious by raise of hands, how many of you guys are doing affirmations? Awesome. Are you personally connecting with those affirmations? That's the next big thing, right? Because, oh, Bridget, that is so cute. I didn't know you could do a hands up little symbol. <gasps> like brownie point for you. She has this little thing on hers. It's like a hand. It's so cute. Um, so I didn't, I, hi. And um, so I actually learned that affirmations need to be something that you are completely um, engaged with. And so I call it a charge. Some of you guys can call it whatever you want, maybe call it an emotional connection. I call it a charge because I can really connect with that charge feeling inside of myself. When I'm excited, I know how it feels inside of me. Um, when, you know, I get to go on a date night with my husband, I know how that feels inside of me. Think about like the first date you went on with somebody or when you get to go on a girl's night, like something that excites you. Okay. That feeling inside of you, that's an emotional charge. So you need to be emotionally connected with whatever your affirmations are, but they also need to have some kind of action with them. So when I first started with Lavelle, it really lined up because Paul was teaching us to say, I am 200K. And I had literally only been in the business for a few weeks when he said to me, I want you to write, I am 200K and post it all over your house, right? Well, for me, it didn't really mean much. And so I had these I am 200Ks all over the place, but it almost felt weird for me to say it. And for some of you, it might not. I'm just talking to the people who aren't maybe emotionally connecting with that. I wasn't feeling it. The I am 200K, I am, you know, um, one of the other ones I think I had in my house was I'm a fat burning machine. And I mean, I just wasn't connecting with them. So I found a different way of connecting with them. I actually, mine always start with, I am happy and grateful. I am happy and grateful that I am hitting the top rank in my company by helping others feel their best. And I'm achieving it in four months. One of the other things I love about the Miracle Morning for Network Market is, Marketers is in affirmations in that chapter, they even give you some with like specific plans. And in Think and Grow Rich as well, they definitely do that. So think about what it is and don't just think about it in your own business, but think about it in the areas that are most important to you in life, right? So for me, it's, you guys have heard me say this before, it's God, family, my business. And so I have one for each of those. And I make them simple enough where I can remember them throughout the day without having to carry around my whole journal with me to remember what my affirmations are. So make them something that you will emotionally remember and connect with. All right, I'll give you an example. I'm not super lovey-dovey. That is not my personality. Uh, my parents were very loving growing up, but they weren't very touchy-feely. My husband loves touchy-feely. So I have to remind myself to be that way for him. So here's one for my family is, I am happy and grateful that I'm a loving and affectionate wife to my amazing husband. Okay, I say that to myself quite often to remind myself that when he comes home, to make sure that I hug him and kiss him because that's what kind of stuff he likes, right? And I could go days without that and it's fine, but that is his personality. And so that's one of the ones that I, Kelly's laughing because she knows. So I have to say that over and over and over. And it's easy for me to remember because I say it enough. Um, another one is I'm happy and grateful that I am bringing in two new promoters that are going to hit VIP 800 within their first two weeks of business by October 15th. So that one is very specific, right? And so I've even thought about what's that going to feel like when I help that promoter. You know, and those are the affirmations that I'm saying over and over again. So they could be quarterly. So it could be an affirmation that you're doing from now until the end of this year. That would be quarterly. Or it could be something for just a month at a time or a couple of weeks at a time, depending on what you want. But come up with an affirmation for your family, if that's something that's important to you, an affirmation for maybe your workouts, if working out's important to you and whatever the goal is going on with that, and come up with maybe one for your personal business and one for the business of your team, okay? And if you have those four memorized, you'll say them not only first thing in the morning, which is so important, but you'll start to memorize them and have them throughout the rest of the day. And I want you to take those affirmations that you make and save them in the notes of your phone. So you have them with you everywhere you go right? Maybe even voice record yourself saying them 
and have emotion in your voice so that when you are driving, if you can't remember them, you could just click that button, click the play button and listen to yourself saying it, okay? Um, and so you know what you need to work on, you know what you're struggling with, and that's what you really wanna line up your affirmations with as well. So we have silence, we have affirmations, and I will say one more thing about affirmations for those of you that um, might be struggling with them. I struggled with them in the very beginning as far as a believer, as far as like, how is that biblical? Like, I don't understand the ask, believe, receive. I, I had a really hard time with it at first. Um, but once I understood that, you know, everything, all the desires that you have upon your heart, you know, they weren't just magically put there. God put them there. He wants me to have those things that are upon my heart. He gave me the gifts, the talents, and the skills. I have to use them. I have to believe that he will equip me. It says in the Bible, ask and ye shall receive. Knock on the door and it will be open to you, right? So for those of you that maybe are struggling in that area, you know, that is something I did too. Once I let that go and started using affirmations, I saw huge changes. Because you also are tricking your subconscious. There's a whole science behind it. You can Google it. Or if you get, I wish I made a profit off this. If you get the Miracle Morning for Network Marketers, you'll read, or the regular Miracle Morning, you'll read all about the science behind why affirmations work. So we have silence, we have affirmations. And guys, my silence, like I said, three minutes. My affirmations take me maybe two or two to five minutes, depending on how many I'm saying. And then the next letter is V for visualization. Visualization is so important, right? And that can come in lots of different ways. When I first started with Lavelle, lots of our locals, Paul would say, I want everybody to close their eyes. I want you to think about what it would be like to pull up to your house. The lawn is completely cut perfectly. Everything in your lawn looks perfect, but the best part is you didn't do it at all. You had to pay some, you got to pay somebody to do it because your business is so busy and you are spending any extra time that you have with your family that you don't have time to cut your lawn, but it doesn't matter because you have so much extra cash flow coming in that you want to bless somebody else for their work on your grass. And then you walk into your house and you've been able to completely redo your living room. It's exactly the color scheme that you want. You walk onto the rug and you feel the fluffiness underneath your feet. Like he got so detailed with his visualization, right? That you were wanting it. You walked outside and saw your new beautiful pool with a cascading waterfall. You hear the laughter of your kids swimming in your pool. Like feel how that feels. Listen to how that sounds. That's how crystal clear you want to get with your visualization. So I, I like to make my visualizations go along with my affirmations right? So how would it feel if I helped that new promoter hit VIP 800? What would that look like as we celebrate on Facebook? How would that conversation go when I ask her what she's going to do with that $500 cash or he? And, um, you know, going through that, there's a, one of my affirmations is about an exact amount of money that I want to have by year end because Ryan and I are trying to get an investment property. So my visualization that goes along with that is, about what it would feel like to walk into the office and sign those papers. What would it feel like to get to um, be able to, you know, fix up a house so that other people can rent it? Those kind of things. I also always have, you guys can't see because it's literally across from me, I always have my vision board hanging on my wall in my office. And that has a lot of the same things that I'm doing affirmations on because I don't make my vision board just all about being pretty. My vision board is like very specific. What are the three things I'm trying to achieve in my family this quarter? What are the three things I'm trying to achieve with my business this quarter? And what are the three things I'm trying to achieve personally this quarter? And so those are on there with pictures that go with it. So I can look up there and see it really fast. And I also have my bank account. Here's another great visualization tip, guys. You know what your mobile banking account looks like, right? Take a screenshot of it and print it out and then cross off with a black marker the amount that's there now and any digits that go along with your bank account and then put in the amount that you want it to be, okay? Everything that's on my vision board, there is a picture of and it's in my phone in an album called Affirmations Visualization. I also have more specific pictures in there of things and of maybe um, things that we're trying to get as a family or a vacation that we're about to go on as a family, things like that. So make sure that you have those in your phone as well so that if you are having a rough moment in your day or you are traveling, you have a way to still be able to do those things, all right? So connecting with your affirmations is important, but really visualization is also equally important because you've got to, again, feel it. Use your senses. What would it smell like? What would it feel like? What would it sound like? And I know for some of you, this is going to feel so strange at first, and it did for me too. But the more you can connect, I see that laugh, the more you can connect 
on a deeper level and feel it to be real, the bigger chance you have of creating that reality. Okay. I, I firmly believe it. I know it sounds bonkers, but I have been in this business long enough and I've watched enough. And if you don't believe it, I want you to get the secret app and I want you every single day to read something about the secret because that will help you to understand. And so many CEOs, multimillionaires and billionaires believe in this method too. Okay. And think and grow rich. I mean, how old is that? Right? So we have silence, affirmations, visualization. I mean, all three of those should be done in less than 10 minutes. The next one's E is for exercise. I will tell you guys this. I don't do exercise first thing in the morning during this time because I don't generally have time to do it. A couple days a week, I do meet my neighbor at 5.30 a.m. We go for a quick 30-minute brisk walk, so that does count on those days. But on the other days, I sometimes just stand up and do a few stretches, a few deep breathing techniques. You could do some sun salutations. Um, and then plan for that exercise time because the exercise time is important at some point in your day. Why? Because we know it's important for endorphins. We know it's important for creativity in your mind. We know it's important to stay sane. <laughs> We, and you also know that it's important for our business because we need to be healthy and strong in order to be able to achieve our dreams and hopes, right? So put it on your calendar, but for the E for exercise during this part, if you only have a lot of 30 minutes in the morning or 20 minutes in the morning, that's okay. Make the E part though a minute or two that you just take some time to deep breathe or do some stretches or do something that will get the blood flowing in your body because that's what it's really all about. And then R stands for reading. Guys, this is another really cool thing that I learned in the first year of starting with Lavelle. My husband and I both were committed to reading Compound Effect right around that Christmas that year. And that's a book that I read every year in January because it reconvicts me. And it talked, Darren Hardy talks about how the little things compound throughout the year. But one of his biggest points that he makes in there, if you spent 10 minutes a day reading over the course of a month, that's 300 minutes, which equals one book. If you read one book a month, over a year, that's 12 books, guys. And I'm not talking about reading fiction books. I'm talking about reading books that are gonna help you to get yourself to the next level. A lot of times when we do the retreats that we've been doing lately, people will ask the 200K panel, how did you get where you are? Or how did you start to think at a higher level? It is from this, this development, this personal development journey. Elise was on that journey at least seven years ahead of me. So I'm seven years behind her, but I caught up really fast. Why? Because I was reading a book a month and I was pouring into myself and allowing myself to understand and to believe these things. But it's really important that you spend that time reading. So first book I would recommend if you haven't read Miracle Morning. Next book, we can give you a whole list. You know, in wethrivevault.com, there's a ton. If you just came back from the retreat, you got lots of recommendations there. But Go for the No is a great one. They have Go for the No for Network Marketers. Um, that would be a great one if you're struggling with how to, you know, push through rejection and making sure you're doing your reach outs and follow ups. Um, another great one is The Golden Ticket. I heard Girl Wash Your Face is amazing. I haven't read that one. Compound Effects, one of my favorites. Um, there's just so many great books and here's the thing if you could read one a month And so if you have specific goals right now and your affirmations and your visualizations are lining up And there is something that that you know You need to get better at in order to achieve those then try to find a book from somebody who is a professional and Use that book during your reading time But whichever you do set a timer for 10 minutes a day to so get that reading done in the morning and you will see huge things happen as you start to read a book every single month. You guys, the average person, once they leave college, never reads a nonfiction book again. It's crazy, right? So I feel like I have been more educated over the last three years of reading a book almost every single month than I ever was my four years in college. So we have silence, affirmations, visualizations, exercise, reading, and the last one is scribing, which is journaling, which some of you guys are wanting to throw eggs at me right now. But journaling is so vitally important, guys. And I actually, a lot of times when I'm reading, will find things that I want to dissect or get a little deeper with, or maybe I disagree with, or maybe I'm annoyed with, right? Win friends and influence people is a great one too, um, could put on there. And so I will literally just open up my journal, kind of write that down and come back to it when it's time for journaling. And here's the thing, guys. Journaling doesn't have to be some beautiful poem that you write. It is just a time for you to get down the thoughts that are in your head on paper. It's not for anybody else to look at. 
one of the things that people asked at this, this last retreat was they asked at least if she saves her journals, which she does. I do not. I throw mine away. When they are full, they are literally burned or ripped up depending on what I wrote in them. And that's because I've been through some really hard times. And during those times, like our bankruptcy, or some of you may or may not know this, but my husband went through um, an addiction problem and obviously you never get over addiction. But during that time where he was really struggling, I mean, I wrote a lot. I put down those thoughts. I put down how I was feeling. I put down during our, you know, bankruptcy and, and having to deal with those things, the resentment and the you know, all the worries and frustrations and all those things that were going on, I wrote them down. I would never want somebody else to find that, especially would not want my children to find that or my husband if I ever passed away. So mine hit the highway when I'm done with them. But that is a great place to put down your frustrations. It also, leaders, is a great place to put down your frustra frustrations or annoyance or whatever complaints down and not talk about with your downline, okay? Because that's poisoning your own well. You never talk about things that are annoying you or bothering you or frustrating you because we're human. We are gonna have things that are gonna bother us. But talk about it with your upline or talk about it in your journal. And the best thing to do first is to go to God and go to your journal because nobody else is gonna be able to fix it for you anyways. Once you get it out, a lot of times you feel a lot better about it. Um, the other thing that I love is you can find journals at Marshall's and they have like a scripture at the top or a cute little quote, success quote at the top. They're usually like $7.99. And if there's a day where I don't know what to journal about, I'll just journal about that quote or that Bible verse and see what it does if it evokes something in me. Um, but that's a place where you can really be honest and candid with yourself and ask some questions. And listen, if you don't even know what to journal about in the beginning, you can just say, I have no idea what I'm doing in here. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. And maybe ask some deeper questions as the days go on. Like, why do I not feel like I am where I want to be? Why am I resisting writing in my journal, right? So those are the steps for Miracle Morning, okay? It's silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing, or journaling, whatever you want to call it. And here's the thing, guys. This is something that if you commit to, give yourself 90 days, right? We know, first of all, for anything to really have true results, you got to give it a full month. But I'm going to ask you guys to take from now until the end of the holidays and give yourself every single morning to get this done. For some of you, you'll do 20 minutes. Some of you will do 30. Some of you will fall in love with this and want an hour to do it every single morning. You will see results, okay? And I will tell you, too, that Miracle Morning for Network Marketers does come in an audible I don't know if it's on iTunes or not, but you can look and find out. Um, but I know it's on Audible and it's really great to listen to too. But I love the book because there are so many things that you're going to want to highlight or underline. Or like I even wrote out some of my affirmations in here because they give you a step-by-step -step of how to make your own affirmations. And so it was really helpful for me. Um, and then I will tell you guys this too. During that time, a lot of things will come out and I'll just write them down another piece of paper, right? And it'll remind me that I need to do this or reach out to that. And why? Because you're calming your brain and you're allowing your brain to be creative. And that's a really important time to do that. So what might happen for you is all of a sudden five names might pop in your head that you need to do your five reach outs to today. Okay. And those things might just happen. And that's a great way for you guys to get that out, write it down, come back to it later when you have your, when you have that time on your calendar, right? Which we'll talk about next week is how to calendar plan. Um, Kelly, anything I, I missed that you think I should talk about? I muted you. Oh, you just muted yourself because I unmuted you. And now we can hear you. Now you can hear me. Um, so I would suggest you can also get the book. There is like a workbook that goes with it. Oh, yeah. That sort of like builds upon how to do it in the morning. Um, so if you're making the commitment to do it, invest in the workbook. You get to, I mean, it really sort of teaches you, dumbs everything down and gives you ideas. It's very cool to go back and look at it. So I suggest that if you're, if you're starting to do this and this is new to you, get the workbook. That's the only other thing. And stay committed to it. I don't know about you guys, but if you're a calendar blocker, you're going to become one after Blair teaches everybody next week. Um, I would write it down. Like I write it down in my calendar to make sure that I've checked it off each day because then I know that it'll happen. So you can literally write out Saver and check it off. So those are just my tips. That's a good idea to write it out. All right, guys. Well, I hope this was helpful and... 
I will um, be on next week to talk more about, oh, thanks, Jennifer. She even put the link. Um, to, I'll be back next week. We'll talk about calendar blocking. I will double check, or you know what? Hold on, let's see. Yeah, we could make, we'll do Tuesday at the exact same time. So we'll do next Tuesday at 8 p.m. for calendar blocking. I'll get an invite made up so you guys can share that. And we'll have this recording as well put up on the vault under the personal development part, okay? All right, guys, have a great day. Set your alarm for earlier tomorrow morning. Get started. Don't let something stop you. Remember, you don't have to be perfect. Just you have to take action. All right, bye, guys.